Hi, welcome back to The Basement. I'm Steve Lewis. You know, it's kind of hard for me to believe that you have to go all the way back to episode two for an episode that I've devoted to Ricky Fatar or Blondie Chaplin, though they were only Beach Boy members for a short time, joining early in 1972. Blondie left December 1973, Ricky left December 1974. They made great contributions to the band at a really great period of time during Carl and the Passions and the Holland era, both on record and on stage. Well, today we're going to begin to rectify that oversight by talking about the solo work of Blondie Chaplin. Now, both Ricky and Blondie have done massive amounts of session work for some of the biggest names in the business over the years. They've remained very, very active ever since leaving the Beach Boys and continue on to this day. In addition to all the session work, Blondie Chaplin has, over the years, produced two really solid solo albums. In 1977, there was the Blondie Chaplin album, and nearly 30 years later, in 2006, came the follow-up, Between Us. Both albums are really auteur affairs. Blondie wrote all the tracks on both albums. Naturally, he sang lead vocals and provided much of the instrumentation on both, being a very talented multi-instrumentalist. I'd like to begin today by talking about the Blondie Chaplin album from 1977. I found very disparate release dates on this. Some sources say it came out in February, others say July, some say as late as October. If anybody knows the actual release date on this, I'd really appreciate it if you could pass it along in the comments. I can't find a definitive date. The album was released on David Geffen and Elliot Roberts' Asylum label, which by this point was part of the WIA family, Warner, Electra, and Asylum, and boasted a roster of some of the hottest acts in rock music at the time. They had Joni Mitchell, Jackson Brown, The Eagles, and Linda Ronstadt, among many others, and in the early 70s had even coaxed Bob Dylan away from Columbia for the Planet Waves album. Blondie's album was produced by Rob Fabroni, who was already on his way to becoming one of the biggest producers in the rock business. He'd already worked with Blondie on the Holland album, producing Blondie and Ricky's track, Leaving This Town. Since that time, he'd gone on to do, among other things, production duties for Eric Clapton's No Reason to Cry, and co-produced with Rick Danko of the band, Rick Danko's solo, self-titled album in 1977. The back cover credits Blondie with vocals, guitar, piano, bass, and percussion, and Beach Boy fans will note that Ricky Fatar is credited with drums and percussion, and Carly Munoz plays organ on at least some of the tracks. In addition to other session players, there's a large group of background vocalists, including such notable names as Clyde e. King and Vanetta Fields. The album opens with the track Bye Bye Babe, which is one of the strongest tracks on it. And I'm sure the guitar sound in the opening sent a lot of people scrambling for the liner notes to see if that was George Harrison. The guitar on this track sounds, for all the world, like mid-70s George Harrison. To Ricky's credit, it's him playing, and he varies the guitar sound. You never see that comparison again on the album, but boy, for all the world, it sounds like George Harrison when that song begins. It's a complicated track. There are a lot of changes at various points bass, guitar, and piano all seem to take a lead, but it never feels disjointed, it never loses the groove, it really holds together and it keeps your interest. The second track on the album, Can You Hear Me, is my favorite track on the album, probably my favorite solo Blondie track, and it really should have been a hit single. It's got a great groove to it, it really trips along, so cool, Blondie's vocal is terrific. It's got this section in the middle where it changes tempo and the a uh, group of background singers come in, then it goes into a really cool backward guitar solo, then back to the rapid tempo thing with the background singers, and then back into the groove, and it's really nice when it makes that transition back into that groove that is really sort of the hook and the, the meat of the track. Can You Hear Me and Bye Bye Babe were released as the A and B side of a single in the UK, which was a great choice. Apparently the single didn't really do very well in the UK, but it's a great, great record and a great pairing. Asylum made a different choice in the U.S., and we'll talk about that later. By the way, I just happened to notice that the track is called Bye Bye Babe on the album and Bye Bye Baby on the UK B-side. The third track is called Crazy Love, and as you'd expect after two rockers, we slow the pace down a little bit here. Instead of being guitar-led, this is more piano-based. It's got some nice strings on it. 
The strings on the choruses sound very much like Gus Dudgeon's work with Elton John. Very nice track. Following that, we have another one of the real highlights of the album called Woman Don't Cry. It's a mid-tempo song and has a little hook in it that sounds to me like horn and guitar sort of making this slide that is really, really cool and really provides a nice hook. It's a little simpler than the tracks that have come before it, but at this point in the album, that's kind of a welcome change. Next up is a song called Loose Lady, and while there's nothing wrong with this track, except I really don't care for the title particularly, I think Blondie could have made a stronger album by leaving it off. There's 11 tracks on this album, and if there's a complaint about the album, it's that the arrangements are kind of samey. You get bass, drum, two guitars, piano, maybe an organ, and the background singers in almost every single track, and Loose Lady doesn't really provide anything new to the mix. I think it might have brought the album a little more in focus to leave it off, maybe make it a nice B-side or something. Nothing wrong with it, but it, this might be a case where less would have been more. The final track on side one is called Be My Love, and this is a rocker to sort of end side one. It's got a big horn section in it. Horns were used very sparingly heretofore on the album. It's a good way to end side one, almost as if you're watching a concert and they're giving you a big energetic ending before they go for a break and then come back to wind up the show. Side two kicks off with what is probably the most Beatlesque cut on the album, Lonely Traveler. It features piano and bass with some light guitar work and a really nice organ solo. I'm not sure if that organ solo is played by Carly Munoz or Richard T, both of whom are credited with organ on the album, but that's a real highlight of that track. Following that, you get Riverboat Queen, which, as you might guess from the title, is kind of country-flavored. It reminds me of early 70s Leon Russell which actually a lot of the tracks on the album do. It features Garth Hudson from the band on accordion, and I actually wish they had mixed Garth Hudson's accordion playing a little higher in the mix earlier in the track. It becomes more prominent as the track goes on, but for me that's a real highlight and gives the track a bit of a different sound from the rest of the album. Leon Russell also comes to mind on the next track, which is Say You Need Me. Even more so, it sounds a lot like Elton John's Have Mercy on the Criminal from the Don't Shoot Me album in 1972. It's piano and organ based, slow tempo. It's got sort of a gospel feel to it. The usual backing vocalists come in partway through, which I have to say at this point in the album is getting kind of predictable. You know they're coming. You know what they're going to sound like. At this point, I'm really wishing to hear Blondie sing a track by himself without the backing vocalists coming in. They're used well here. They belong here. But I wish he'd mixed it up a little bit and used the backing vocalists a little more sparingly. The next track is a rocker, For Your Love, and it's another highlight. It's a good, strong rocker. It's got a great groove. It's got a nice saxophone solo by Steve Lawrence, and that's not the Steve Lawrence of Steve and Edie fame. That's the Steve Lawrence who had played with Buddy Miles and would go on to do a lot of work in the 80s with Neil Young. The final track on the album is called Give Me More Rock and Roll, which is a fun closer. It's almost like a little encore for the record. Works really well in context. Unfortunately, Asylum, for some reason, chose this as the A-side of the single with Woman Don't Cry on the B-side. Away from the context of the album and never having heard of Blondie Chaplin before, which, let's face it, most of the record buying public hadn't, I think most people would have listened to this and thought it was like a limp Kiss record. It's really not representative of Blondie Chaplin's work on the album. Certainly the track Can You Hear Me, which was the UK A-side, was a far superior choice. Additionally, I'm not sure that this was the greatest album cover to launch Blondie Chaplin as a solo artist. Again, you've got all this empty space here. You've got a black and white photo on the front. You have color on the back. I don't know why they didn't put a color photo on the front. I don't think that this would have made a particularly good front cover, but they could have at least used color on the front. And I'm sure that Blondie approved these photos, but Blondie Chaplin looked really cool. And I have to say, neither of these photos is particularly flattering. i got to believe they could have come up with some cooler photos of Blondie Chaplin to make this album cover a little more intriguing. I'm not sure how much the choice of album cover and the choice of single A-side in the U.S. contributed to the album's relative lack of success, but it remains a great album. If you like Carl and the Passions and Holland, if you like that period of the Beach Boys, this is really worth tracking down if you haven't. Blondie, of course, went on to continue with session work, 
It would be almost, as I say, 30 years before his second solo album, Between Us, which we'll have to talk about in a future episode. From my research online, I understand that there is another Blondie Chaplin solo album called Fragile Thread from 2001. It's listed as unreleased but in circulation. If anybody has heard that, I would love to hear what you think of it. Any information about that would be really interesting. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think of the Blondie Chaplin album, anything else along those lines. I also want to talk about Blondie and Ricky's session work in more detail in a future episode. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. Again, love to hear your comments and looking forward to next time. Thank you. Bye.